even if you're on a tight timeline, I recommend you take at least two days to visit Luxor. The Nile River splits Luxor into two parts, the East Bank and the West Bank. The East Bank is the location of Luxor towns. This is where most of the locals live and where you'll find the majority of hotels and restaurants. The notable sites to visit on the side of the river are the Luxor Temple and the Karnak Complex. The West Bank of Luxor is where the ancient Egyptians buried the dead. This is where most of the tombs and mortuary temples are, including the famous Valley of the Kings and Queens. I suggest you dedicate one day to the West Bank and the other to the East Bank. Traveling between the two is not as easy as you may think, and that's because in central Luxor there are no bridges. The closest bridge is like 10 kilometers away. Let's go to the Valley of the Kings. Go, go, go. It's early morning, like 6.30, the best time to go. Hello! <laughs> Quick, the cheapest and the most epic way to cross the Nile is for sure by ferry or motor launch. The dock of the local ferry is next to the Luxor temple and it's gonna cost you just 5 Egyptian pounds, like 30 cents. I can't think of another site in Egypt that has more archaeological treasures than the West Bank of Luxor. Let's start with the Valley of the Kings. As you visit Egypt, this will be one of the highlights of your trip. This is where the greatest of the great pharaohs that ruled in the New Kingdom rest in peace. The ticket purchase process is a little confusing. There are more than 60 tombs, but only 8 are accessible to the public. When you buy the regular ticket, you get access only to 3 of these 8 tombs. If you want to visit some other tomb, like the tomb of Tutankhamun or Seti the first, you have to buy a separate additional ticket for each tomb. The Tutankhamun tomb, for example, costs 300 Egyptian pounds per person, about $20, and the Seti one tombs cost 1,000 Egyptian pounds. The same happens at the Valley of the Queens. The standard ticket gives you access to certain tombs, but if you want to see the best tombs, like the tomb of Nefertari, which has incredible vibrant colors, one of the best preserved in Egypt, it will cost you 1,400 Egyptian pounds extra, about 90 euro, and of course it's definitely worth it. But if you don't know all this before, you may not bring enough money in your pocket, or maybe change your mind. You just wanted to buy a standard ticket, then you're there, and you're like, you know, I've been traveling across the world to get to Egypt, you know what, well, I prefer to spend $100 more to see the tomb of Seti I of Tutankhamun. To avoid this kind of problem, please take into consideration buying a Luxor Pass. The Luxor Pass is a single ticket that includes all of the archaeological sites in the West and East Bank. If you get the premium Luxor Pass that costs $200, it includes all the access to all of the tombs. So think about it, just the access to the tomb of Nefertari costs almost like the Luxor Pass. It's a no-brainer. You're gonna save money, and most of all, you will avoid headaches and frustration. So I highly recommend it. Now it's time to discover the hidden gem of the West Bank, the Temple of Medinet Habu. This is one of the less visited and known sites of the West Bank, but with less people and no hassle, this temple is an oasis of tranquility. And here you can get a kind of intimate feel with the surroundings that you don't get at other sites. After Medina Tabu, of course, visit the temple of Hatshepsut. Before we discover together the rest of Luxor, if this video is helping you, please share, write a comment down below. He helps a lot with the algo. Thank you. Hatshepsut became queen of Egypt around the age of 12. She is one of the few, and by far most successful, women to rule Egypt as pharaoh. The temple consists of three levels, each of which has a colonnade, and the mummy form statues represent Hatshepsut as Osiris. This temple is jaw-dropping and you can't miss it. The Colossi of Memnon are two 18 meter statues representing King Amunetep II. You'll probably see them first while driving because they are right on the roadside. Here there's no admission fees, no tickets, you just stop by and admire these wonderful masterpieces from the past. After visiting these sites, if you have some spare time, check also the tomb of the nobles or the Mertuari temple of Meremta. What I did, personally, I headed back to the East Bank where my great value hotel was, the Steigenberger Akti, an incredible pool overlooking the Nile for a special price. And after chilling by the Nile, I had dinner in Luxor, I explored a bit uh, Luxor town, and soon I was ready for the next day to explore the East Bank starting with the Karnak temple. The 
Tirana complex is located right in the city of Luxor and it's easily reachable by taxi or carriage or walking if your hotel is close by. What's the price for foreigners now? Uh, 100 after 200, there's a discount. This is the second largest temple complex in the world. For over 2,000 years, temples, monuments and buildings were added to the complex. Once the Karnak Temple and the Luxor Temple, our next stop, were connected via the Great Processional Way. And I'm glad to tell you that very soon, the Great Processional Way, thanks to the work made by the Egyptian government, the archaeologists, will open once again. So be sure to stay tuned for this important event that will make history, and there's no better way than subscribing in this channel. This is one of the main touristic squares in Luxor. We made it to the entrance, guys. Just bought the ticket, and now for the foreigners, it's 80 Egyptian pounds, yes? So, and thank you very much. The regular ticket price for an adult is 160 Egyptian pounds, but due to the global situation, as of today, you have a 50% discount to 80 Egyptian pounds. This is impressive, guys. Just look at these guys. Unlike the other temples in the city, the Luxor temple is not dedicated to a cult of a god. Instead, it was dedicated to ceremonies and crownings. If it fits your schedule between visiting the Karnak complex and the Luxor temple, you may consider visiting Dendera. You do have to drive 40 minutes to the city of Kenna, but the carvings, the hieroglyphics I've seen there, I've seen nowhere in Egypt. If you want to know more, watch this video. Can you believe the color is still in this condition? Wow, what, what is this? What is this? This is the infamous Dandera light bulb. Many believe that this was depicting a light bulb and that ancient Egyptians already had electricity. 